How's it going, folks? I'm Matthew. This is Lemoyer's Cards, and today we're taking a look at Command Fest San Francisco's big CDH tournament. We've been seeing a few of these Command Fest tournaments start to pop up, be more and more common, which is really awesome to see. This was a no proxy event, which is kind of, you know, one of the downsides of the Command Fest events. From what I heard, people were really cool about working together, trying to make sure people had their decks and stuff, you know, lots of friends meeting up and sharing cards and stuff like that. So that's really cool. It is a little unfortunate and I will always preface it uh, when I know beforehand that an event is non-proxy because sometimes that creates some considerations for cards. We're going to be taking a look at this top 16, going over the meta breakdown, going through all the decks that uh, popped off and looking to see if anything sticks out. As always, huge thanks to all my amazing patrons over on Patreon. Lots of new perks over there like getting coaching, private deck videos, help with your deck list, or getting decks featured on uh, videos like this. Thank you to all the patrons over there. And if you're here, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below which of these deck lists was your favorite. Share the video. It helps a lot show people these cool command fest events i love that these are happening more and more and hopefully we see one of these happen at like every command fest i feel like one of them absolutely should well, that being said let's hop into it use the link in the description below to download whatnot and you'll get 15 dollars to use to buy magic singles sealed product get anything that you want really there's no limits you just get $15 on the account for free just for signing up. This is one of the best ways you can support the channel. And again, it's just free stuff. Use the link in the description below. Give Whatnot a try. All right, first up, we're going to take a look at the meta breakdown. I will say there's a few asterisks on uh, some of these things because just taking a look at the top 16, there's a deck list. There's another Tim Necrom that had unknown commander because people keep using terrible sites other than Moxfield when they submit their decks and EDH top 16 doesn't know how to read it. So use Moxfield so I don't have to deal with that. Entries there should be like 11 or more. Again, there, some of these numbers might be iffy if more people had them. Some reason it looked like this tournament had more of the unknown commanders than I'd seen on in other ones. But look at the numbers we have. We have TNK showing up a lot and actually getting a pretty below average conversion rate for them. They're usually in the 20s, like 25 or something. Rockside is showing up as the second most popular deck, which is not that surprising for the West Coast. There's a lot of turbo players there. Uh, a lot of the people that usually pop off with Rockside were just relatively local to this event and also the deck is just trending up it's really popular if you want to play something in grixis colors that's a little bit faster you know rock size is a great option really good showing for kennen we had seven kennens with a 42 percent conversion rate usually we've been having these kind of flipped where the numbers are much higher and the conversion rate is much lower so that could be that kennen just performed a little better this weekend it could be that less you know inexperienced players or just kind of more casually you know invested players showed up with kennen and so the conversion rate kind of went weighed more towards like, hey, some of the better people showed up with Kennen and those were the only ones. And so they did really well. We see decks like Sisse kind of doing okay. One and four, a little bit less popular than you'd expect. Rog Thrass keeps showing up. And we just have some threes and twos, you know, Stella, Kenrith, Najila, pretty unpopular option for what has, you know, could sometimes be like, up to number two at a, at a big CH event. So a couple of things sending out a little bit, but kind of the meta I would expect. If you go to a very turbo kind of heavy environment, decks like Sisse kind of lose a lot of value. Decks like Ken and Can, although we did see it show up here. First up, I love when I get to talk about it. We are talking about Rograk and Thrasios, Rog Thrass. I've talked about this deck a lot because I love it. I think it's awesome. Been a lot of people experimenting with it and it's been seeing a, a lot more play, kind of like I said, and I expected. Tezzerit, for the most part, is a staple. I know like Sam Black hasn't been playing it. I think the card is a banger. It gets most of your combo pieces. I would not leave home without Tezzerit in my Rog Thrass deck. Invasion of Mycoria, it's about as good here as it is in most of these kind of decks. Um, the issue is there are some things it doesn't get, like doesn't get Kinnon, can't get Spellseeker, can't get Trophy Mage. So there are elements of your combo lines that it can't get. This version of the build is on Seedborn Muse. It's looking like that's more and more popular here. It's not really a dedicated Thrasios deck for the most part, but if you're able to get some of that permanent based mana online and you're able to power out a Seedborn Muse with like your Cure's Follower or your Cradle or things like that, get going, do the Seedborn Thrasios thing. It's an amazing fallback plan. Some cards that stand out, Sticker Goblin. This goes infinite with Cloudstone Curio with Roger. The card can be a little awkward. Some of the decks aren't on it because a lot of them don't have something great to do with red mana. Uh, you can pump it into, you know, your Invasion of Mycoria or another X spell. But in terms of like a pure payoff in red, a lot of them aren't even on like Wheel of Fortune, which we don't see here. We do have the gamble, which isn't that common. There's not a lot of payoffs in, with the red mana. So a lot of times it's purely a combo piece. So some decks opt not to run it. Very Mastermind, just a decent value creature. Magda might look weird if you don't play the deck. It can just make you a lot of mana. There are lines you can do with Cloudstone and Relic of Legends, bouncing Magda and Roger and tapping them down and stuff. 
and make, making infinite mana. And you can do this with a couple different creatures like Ragavan as well. Sorcery is the only thing really standing out here is the Gamble, Neoform, Finale, Eldritch, Transmute Artifact. We have tons of artifact based combos with Cloudstone Curio, Basalt Monolith with Kennen, potentially Relic of Legends if we have some other stuff assembled. But and then also being able to just go get like Phyrexian Menworth, like tons of flexibility in the card, just powerful card. Do have the Dispel, Veil of Summer, no Autumn's Veil, Archdruid's Charm, really powerful in this deck. Crop Rotation also here because we're a Cradle deck. We're also an Emergence on list. Artifacts. So yeah, we're on that Cloudstone, Relic Legends, Machine Gods F. We have a lot of different ways to combo with Artifacts. Machine Gods FG with Devoted Druid, Cloudstone with Dockside, or with um, Namesticker Goblin. Uh, we're not doing like the Shrieking Drake Earthcraft stuff, which is like something my list and like lists like I think Rebels and Sam, Sam Blacks do. We're on the Defense Grid, which I think is pretty good. Notably, we're not on Dosen, which I probably like better than Defense Grid. There is a nice little juke of Transmute Artifact or whatever, and then go get Defense Grid when they think you're getting something else. But that's also the same case with Creature Tutors. You know, you could put a Creature Tutor into play that they think is getting whatever, and then you go and get Dosen instead and put Dosen directly into play. They are on the Guild Artisan, which is another way to just net mana. And then the lands. We're on the Cradle, Manamo. Nothing else exceptionally surprising with the lands. There is no Surveil land. I've been on the Hedge Maze in my list. I found it pretty good. Rock Thrass, very powerful deck. Expect to see more of it. Consider giving it a try. Next up, we've got Dutes, Sicily, and Safina. Uh, this is a player who's reached out to me about getting deck advice and was asking, uh, was talking to me about like things that maybe they should do with their deck and some changes they like to make and what I would suggest. And then they got this top 16 and they were super hyped and messaging in the Discord. It was awesome to see. This is kind of a variant on T and K color, you know, mid range value stuff. This version of the deck does things a little bit differently. You can do time sieve stuff. Don't really do the whole breaker horror thing that you get access to with the other friends forever combo like the blues clues but let's take a look at what this version is doing some of the coolest cards that i always love we have a bit more of a timnacrom slant with like both of our creatures kind of being value engines on attack you can see we got kind of hate berry or value engine -y creatures that decently high creature count like this is higher than timnacrom's creature count no dranith magistrate is pretty notable dothy lotho bow masters of course and then braids i really like in this kind of build because if we're making those clues with our Safina, we're able to just sack one of those a turn and then turn that attack into draw three cards. Arena, a potentially great value engine in stalled out games that can get people dead very quickly. Kind of the same with Myrel. This can just be a grand abolisher, which is fantastic. But then also like, hey, if you don't really have a way to win, kind of can just put the beat down on people with some of these things. Grim Hireling can take over a board. Goblin Engineer, pretty nifty. We'll see if there's other options, maybe like a defense grid, but at the very least, being able to go get like a time sieve. The way Safina works is is you investigate for each non-token attacking creature. So you need a lot of creatures to attack to guarantee you're going infinite with time sieve. But we want a lot of creatures. Friends and Gadgeteer can let you go infinite with uh, like whole breaker horror and stuff if you when you're bouncing artifacts, but um, lets you go infinite with Basalt Monolith. Activated ability costs one less. We'll see how we're uh, looking to utilize that. Sorceries, kind of what we would expect. We have the Transmute Artifact. Again, we're a time sieve list. The best tutors, a gamble, mean bet, Sevrek, because we're probably breaching. And also Sevrek can just be decent enough with getting like a time sieve pile or intuition stuff. The one wheel, wheel of fortune. We've got the offer. We're on path and swords. We're on the born upon a win. This is one thing we discussed about if they want to do necro born. I like that you have two intuition things you can do with this deck because you can do the intuition breach line or you can intuition like grand abolisher, time sieve, Savine's wreck and just Oop, put it all into play. Uh, they are in the Fire Covenant. They're still in the Ad Nauseum. They're not like a Turbo Nas deck. Again, when you look at this high of a creature count, it can be really hard to make a deck like a Turbo Nas, you know, and really do a lot very well there. If you hit, you know, three or four creatures in your Nas pile, it's a lot of life and not a lot of action, depending on what you hit. So between that and then the Necro, that was kind of our discussion uh, with the deck list. The cards are just good enough. Getting lots of cards is just good. That's really all I can say. I didn't have an amazing input on that. You definitely more of an in-step Nas deck. And because you do have like a really tight potential like one card win con ish with time sieve being able to just necro super deep and go off uh, like necro born play all your artifacts time sieve boom take an extra turn so we have portable hole that's cool that's like some of them uh, some of the mardu decks do grinding station once you have something that's that worth going heavy on artifact tutors you can get a lot of free value out of adding these things that like tim necrom doesn't usually run grinding station they don't really need it but we're already running ways to get artifacts from the graveyard ways to put them into play ways to tutor them up and so once you're doing that you might as well run cards like grinding station curse mirror which is just good enough anyways time to the one ring they can kind of be like tiebreakers and then you'll see like oh wish call talisman sometimes that's the thing I tutor for. Sometimes I don't have anything else and that's what I use my artifact tutor on. And enchantments, the best stuff, they are on the necro. And then the mana base. We do have the Igonjo, which might seem weird in a four color deck, but one 
probably just good enough anyways. And then two, you need to make sure you're able to get in in combat. And I Ganjo being able to be a mostly uncounterable way to kill a blocker to make sure that your creatures all can get in with Safina and you're able to keep taking those extra turns. It's going to be super helpful. And we are on the one surveil land on the black red one. That's interesting. We're on Cavern of Souls as well. There's a lot of humans, right? All our commanders are humans and we have a lot of them in here. Really cool deck. Not one I am like incredibly familiar with or really have any reps on. There's a bit of Blue's Clues, a bit of Tivit, a bit of Timnacrom, a bit of even like some of the Mardu shells again with like that Goblet Engineer package. Love to see it. Okay, and now we're looking at an absolute travesty because I there's a tapped out deck list. This is the other Timnacrom. I'm not going to make you look at this that long. I don't want to convert it over to Moxfield. I think it should be a game loss if you submit a deck list that isn't on Moxfield. What I'm going to give you is just a shortened synopsis of your build because if you wanted me to really showcase your deck list, you would have shown it to me in a you know better format than this. I mean, what am I even looking at here? Archivist of Ogma, Delny showing up, Dockside. Very match friend. Gilded Drake. Stocks are kind of up on Gilded Drake. They're a little bit higher on the creatures. More just kind of value-oriented mid-rangey creatures in, in the build. Around the March of Swirling Mist. Offer you can't refuse. Kind of, for some reason, those cards just go together in my mind, too. I don't know what it is. People who like one of those just tend to like the other one. We're ball red. We're not on Calling the Week. We're on Dam. And we're on the Reanimate, which I think is a losing popularity. We're on the Smothering Tithe, which just really gained popularity in Timna Grom. Cavern of Souls. Yeah, there might be something else here, but I'm already getting a headache looking at this. Use Moxfield next time. Have some decency. Next up, we are looking at the first Kinnon that we're going to be taking a look at here. Kinnon loves Basalt. So we got the Walking Ballista version of the build. That pops up every now and then. Uh, just another way, a way to go infinite if you don't have the Kinnon, a way to win like the turn you play it. Sometimes you can get in awkward positions. Finale gets exiled, and it's nice to have the Walking Ballista to be able to just, okay, here's where I dump my mana. A whole bunch of dorks. They're on the Flesh Duplicate, not on the Fimage. The creature package, for the most part, is kind of what you expect from like, you know, most of the Kinnon builds. Coma has definitely fallen down in popularity by my account with Kennen. If you get this in play in a more mid-range kind of game, it can really take over things and mess people up. You know, when you compare it to like a Con Sphinx, right, or a Nezahal, or these other ones that don't necessarily win the game but they like basically make it to where other people can't win the game coma fights on a little bit of a different axis where it, it fights like the stalemate kind of games and it breaks through them on the board it's harder for people to win through your nezza hall and not feed you a lot of ways to interact right people can just slam down win attempts through coma if they're untapping right after the coma it doesn't really help in that scenario you see just a whole lot of big flip targets here the tutors we would expect instance we do have the chain of vapor which some kids don't like bogus surprise so this is a new one from thunder junction it's green with spree you can plus two you can spend four and a green extra so four green green and put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield that's kind of the main mode you just get two of your big cannon things and just put them into play for six mana instant speed it's a little ridiculous like the like thunder junction just seems super pushed it's gonna absolutely break some casual games like Six mana instant speed to any two creatures in my hand, just plop them into play. It's kind of a lot. They're on the Born Upon a Win, which I don't see in a lot of Kinnons. It's kind of weird to instant speed win with Kinnon. It is easier, though, when you're on Walking Ballista. So I think it makes a lot more sense once you have that just like guaranteed. Hey, if I get infinite mana, I can win. I don't have some kind of awkward endurance loop like the Kinnons that only win with Finale of Devastation or just locking the board out. Ways to go infinite. They are on the Mirage Mirror. Enchantments, just the Mystic and Ristic. No Sylvan Library. 25 lands. We are on the Homeward Path. Don't see a Hedge Maze to so no Surveil land. A little bit of a different Kinnon build. I kind of like it. It's really sneaky if you can smuggler surprise put in like a con sphinx and then you know some other kind of monster in response to like a wheel or something like ah oh, that's gonna be so gross and then we got another Kinnon. So they're on the Karn. That's immediately standing out. No Walking Ballista in this build. Mainly the same creatures, though again, we're not seeing the Coma, kind of like I said here. And we are seeing the Tachana's Tidebinder, which is a cool one. Not every Kinnon is even on the Elvish Spear Guide. Somewhat notable. Got the Pact of Negation. Pongify. So slightly different interaction. We're still on the Resculpt. We got the Pongify. We got Force of Vigor. This build is opting for the Trinisphere, looking to lock things out a little bit more. And you can kind of see that with the Karn, right? Kind of shutting things down in the mid game to help us set up. And then we are on the Sylvan Library, which again, I kind of expect with a a list that's more willing to kind of be just slightly more grindy in, in a couple ways more of locking people out not too crazy but it is relatively different build right we're, we're not doing the born upon a win walking ballista instant speed wins as much we're not testing that spree card few lock pieces so slightly different take on Kenan. 
Next, we are looking at a Najila, the Blade Blossom. Which version will it be? You never know. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't expect this. I didn't know this was a version. I didn't know this was an option. So we have kind of the best dorks, relatively high density of them, right? Both the Hierarchs, the Bird, the Deathrite Shaman, and got our combo cards, notably not on Cutsel, which kind of seems like a bit of a banger in Najila. I'm a little surprised not to see it, especially with Thought Adele in here. So Thought Adele most notably goes and gets somebody's one ring is what a lot of the Thought Adele decks do. Not really as much a thing with Najila. I'm not not sure what other artifact they'd like to go get. I mean, you're often going to have the ability to get something good, right? You can get a mana crypt. You can get a defense grid, you know, in a lot of the pods that we are seeing in this top 16. Really interesting to see the thought I dealt. Sorceries, I don't know what we would expect. Instance, we're on the Pact Negation, the Calling of the Week, Silence, Snap. So looking, you know, relatively lean, pretty quick. We're on the Nas. Uh, we are on the Fire Covenant. It can be really nice if people feel like they have you kind of locked out and, you know, for your Najila thing, they've been developing a lot of blockers and then just like instant speed, boom. Just looking at the artifacts, you know, to kind of give an idea of what Thought Adele can get. Wish Claw Talisman. We are on the One Ring, so that means we, you know, we do want it. Enchantments, a little bit different here. So we're on the Druid's Repository. We saw a memo on this at Punt City. We're on the flowering of the white tree which some of have tested it's a little tough to cast you know to double white but it's an anthem it makes your things harder to deal with and then the 28 lands we are in the city of traders because looking at a lot of the stuff it looks like kind of no bad cards najila trying to be lean but then we also are doing like one ring thought of adele stuff i guess so interesting hybrid there next up We've got Zane's Rogsai. I don't think there are, there's one change from the last time I covered Zane, and that is he cut Talion in favor of Gataxian Probe, which is back in the list. Kind of hasn't been as popular. Uh, I've seen a few people starting running again. If you know you're trying to go fast and that's what you care about, making sure the coast is clear. You know, looking at the player with the most cards in hand, it's a nice way to do it. Uh, we'll quickly go through Rogsai. You know, its main cards just to kind of. Let people know if you're not familiar. These six creatures, kind of what you expect to see in most of them. Maybe an addition or two, but pretty much these are always there. Lots of tutors, lots of mana. Most of the decks are running Last Chance and Warrior's Oath and Final Fortune to take extra turns. All of the wheels. So, and that means for this tournament, you got to own a Time Twister. Free or cheap interaction. So Zane notably had cut Swan Song for the Talion and now is still without Swan Song and is running the Git Probe. Born Upon a Win, great for your Necro, along with Final Fortune. Tons of free and cheap interaction. That's what we're doing. We're nozzing. We're interacting. We're making sure we win on turn two or three. Uh, we've got the Conqueror Flail, which if you watch my gameplay video with Rock'sai, it was just every single video, every single win was just, hey, here's a here's a Nas behind a Flail. What are you going to do? Fence grade, great. Riding station, great. Four best enchantments. These are what the deck's about. I think Zane is still on the Undercity series, which you said was great, and I found it was great. Relatively standard. I wanted to go through one of these Rock'sai so that when I go to the next ones, I can just point out cards that stand out, but I wanted to talk through at least one of them. And next up, we have a pretty different one you might not expect, and that is Azusa Lost But Seeking. It is a deck that accelerates mana with its commander and combos. We're going to have things like Quirion Ranger We're gonna with Ashaya to get infinite mana. Oh, they got the Kozilek here too, so they can get milled out. The list is set up to where Nissa can kind of be a one card win con where Nissa, uh, when a land enters, one, it's a Lotus Cobra, but then also you'll, uh, when it's another land enters, which is really easy to do with Azusa, then you flip until you reveal an elemental or a elf. And we have Korean Ranger as an elf and we have Ashaya as an elemental. So we're guaranteed to assemble that infinite mana stuff. Lots of ways to use a bunch of this mana with stuff like Kamal. That's pretty awesome. Kozilek, that's dope. It's a way we can draw our deck. Just watch Recruiter. If we get infinite mana, we can go through our deck, get all our creatures. When we walking ballista kind of what we would expect for mono green a lot of them are trying to break cradle or you know get ahead on with you new know, land mana assemble some kind of infinite mana combo and draw your deck and that's for the most part what we see here a couple interesting inclusions like scoot swarm a bunch of tutors here sylvan scrying get you your cradle time of need can get you you know whatever still no docin i know docin's a human so people are just hating on Dose in this tournament. Legolas's quick reflexes, great bit of interaction here. We're on the Veil of Summer, no Autumn's Veil. We are the Archdruid's Charm, another amazing amount of green card. Artifacts, relatively slim. We are an oof deck. So we have ways to get ahead. Cards like Null Rod to stop artifact shenanigans, Trinisphere to slow people down. Doesn't really affect us that much. You'll notice like a whole lot of our stuff is right around that three mana mark. And also we're potentially making a lot more mana, even with people locked out. And then uh, Crucible of Worlds will let us 
play lands from our graveyard. Cordon Crossroads is a cool one to speed up our stuff and Earthcraft popping off. Uh, we're not doing Squirrel's Nest stuff. We're just potentially going to make a ton of mana with Earthcraft. That with Utopia Sprout and Wild Growth. I've talked about this in like Rock Dress. And then Lance, 39. Yeah, this is kind of what we're doing. Ways to net extra mana. We have lots of utility lands. We have a military base. I don't even know what this does. The drawing cards, strip mining people. Uh, what is it? Depletion lands. So lots of ways to get extra mana off our lands. Get our uh, Asusa out early. Get maybe a lock piece set down and just accelerate mana. Just two lands a turn. Try to draw some cards. Get an engine going. Win, win like... So usually after somebody else, right? The mono green deck is usually hard to interact with, especially if somebody makes a win attempt and then the mono green deck goes to win. Uh, you need like hard removal a lot of times or a hard counter like Force of Will or Mind Break Trap. And these decks can kind of just sneak through. Monocolor decks kind of doing it lately. Uh, Susan, not one I expected to see here, but it's a pretty awesome one to see. Kenrith. So nothing too wild in our creatures. We do have Niv-Mizzet, which I guess is wild. You can turn Kenrith into that, you know, Neoform him into that if we're on that. Stunt Devil is a really cool Flash clone, which I really like. Thimage is better than Flesh Duplicate in this deck because you can do Kenrith, Thimage, Dockside lines where you put a counter on the Thimage, it dies, reanimate it, copy Dockside, get infinite mana. Ewit, dude, you know, get, potentially get back pieces. Kitten to do kitten stuff. Niv-Mizzet as like an amazing engine to potentially put into play. And we're not on the new form. We are on Eldritch Evolution, which makes sense, right? We can turn like our kitten into a Niv-Mizzet or, you know, something like that. We're on the Toxic Deluge, Wheel, Sevrek. So we're probably breaching, you know, we got the gamble. Looking five color good stuffy. We're on Cloud Shift, which uh, flickers a creature you control. And I'm always a little surprised to see the Cloud Shift over Ephemerate. What does Cloud Shift do better than Ephemerate? What is that about? Somebody explain this one to me. Five color good stuff. Lots of tutors. We got the Born Upon a Win. No final fortune. We are on Sawn Half, which is pretty cool. Can double our Dockside. Can double our Mayhem Devil, which can be really ridiculous. Cool one you can also do is Gilded Drake. And then in response to your ETB, Sawn Half it. Pop pop. Two drakes. And then C double, not a card we see a lot of, which is, but can be copied. You can choose one. If you have opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you can choose both to copy a spell and create a token that's a copy of target creature. We're a creature combo deck. We're a dockside combo deck. You can kind of see where we're going with this one. And we're on the one ring. We're not nauseing. Most Kenris at this point are not doing ad nauseum. Uh, we're on the smothering tithe. No necropotence. Kind of didn't expect to see smothering tithe. Great card in these kind of high color piles. 27 lands. I wouldn't say there is a standard Kenrith list, but this is pretty close to what I expect for a lot of them they're usually leaning into the creature combos that's kind of got to lean into dockside combos i am a little bit surprised to not see a meal uh that's usually one i would expect to see you know maybe in place of like this kitten or one of these other you know not as necessary creatures maybe didn't find that it was worth the, the slot to have such a dedicated combo only card next up we're looking at a pretty cool one and that's rayhan dargo so i've covered i got distracted <laughs> Got a little distracted by this Roger. That's like some Najila stuff. So we've covered Ikra Dargo. I haven't looked at this Rayhan Dargo. I'm going to assume it does a lot of similar things. I kind of expect a Turbo Jund Dargo list. Um, We're seeing more creatures than I expected. So Roger, just a free creature that doesn't feed Dockside, I guess, if you're thinking why well, run Doc Roger over Ornithopter or something similar. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And then a, a bunch of Mana Dorks. This is a lot of Mana Dorks. What, I mean, what is this one? 10 traditional Dorks. Orcish Lumberjack, Ragavan, Veteran Explorer, which is its own thing. Okay. Wild Cantor, which sacks to add a mana of any color. So just pure mana, Hope of Giraper. A little surprised not to see like Xanted Swarm. And what this makes me think is not, oh, we're trying to set up, you know, for the long game. This makes me think, oh, we're trying to win turn two, and this is our way to be set up on turn one. Veteran Explorer, really interesting. So I'm guessing we're running an okay amount of basics which is really cool because you can Veteran Explorer. The basics come into play untapped and you can sack Veteran Explorer to Dargo and put the basics into play. That's really cool. Uh, same with Orcus Lumberjack. That's going to make our Dargo count higher. And then, yeah, Razaketh, usually a thing these Dargo decks do. They can, you know, Eldritch Revolution do it, things like that, or reanimate it. And we have plenty of creatures to go with it. Okay, so just pure mana and then Razaketh, basically, uh, for our entire 22 creature count. Lots of tutors and mana. Life's Legacy, kind of a Dargo card you expect to see. And then Demonic Bargain, which is not a card you see a lot of. That's three mana. Exile the top 13 cards of your library, then search your library for a card, put that card in your hand, then shuffle. Pretty similar to like Demonic Consultation, that kind of thing. Man, 13. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility, right? The odds that you exile all of your deck, right? All of their potential win con seems a little low. That's really interesting. Not a card I see a lot of, but maybe could use some more CDH play. I don't know. Rituals, guttural response, protection, burn offering to make a bunch of mana, um, sacrifice, make a bunch of mana with Dargo. Once upon a time, I'm expecting we have a pretty low land count if I'm seeing once upon a time. Of course, the Nas. We're just going Burr. 
This is just super burr. 17 artifacts, bunch of mana, Alter Dementia, which can help us mill through our library with Dargo. Alter of the Wretched, which is a really powerful Dargo card. Three mana, when it enters, you can sacrifice an untoken creature. If you do draw X cards, then mill X cards. So with Dargo, we're going to draw seven, mill seven. And then as craft, which you could potentially use, but it also has two and a black, return it from your graveyard to your hand. So if you play this, sack Dargo, recast Dargo, sack this as part of that, you can bring this back with Dargo. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that. Blasting Station, I want to see a lot of sack a creature, do one damage, target creature or player. When a creature comes into play, you can untap it. Very similar to Grinding Station, which we're not on. Birthing Pod, Relic of Legends. So a couple different ways to do like Dargo loops. You can do it with Relic of Legends or Bergy, where you cast the Dargo. Basically make Dargo neutral with a sack outlet, Alter of Dementia, mill everybody. Uh, enchantments, we're on the Earthcraft. That's another way to do it, which it makes a lot of sense because we're doing veteran explorer stuff. So that makes sense. Goblin Bombardment, sack outlet that can win us the game. And Blasting Station, Pattern of Rebirth, put it on a creature. We can sack it with Dargo, put a Resgeth into play. Then we're breaching 26 Lance with how many basics? Just the three basics. That's probably fine. I'm a little surprised not to see two force, but okay. Well, if you want to do the Dargo loop with Earthcraft, you have to have a mountain. So that makes sense while we're doubling up on the mountains. This is a really cool approach to a turbo Dargo list. I really like it. I guess Roger can help us also like, I mean, it's just two mana ritual for Dargo, I guess. Yeah, very burr. I, I really like it. This is really cool. Next up, we are looking at a Sisse list. We're on a couple extra planeswalkers. So we are on the Oko and the Ashiok. The rest of these are kind of the six we usually expect to see. Oko and Ashiok are value-oriented planeswalkers that are pretty cheap, you know, relatively easy to tutor up or just play and be decent. You know, being able to tutor into Ashiok into play in response to a tutor is pretty nice. Creatures, lots of dorks. On um, Dauntless Dismantler, Colossal Sky Turtle, pretty much a staple in Sisay at this point. We are on the Niambi, which is a nice way to like tutor up something, bounce your dockside, something like that. Relevant, you know, ETB or save a creature potentially. And then lots of the combo pieces. We're not going crazy on other value legends. You know, we've got good ones like Lotho, Kennen, Derevi, which we can combo with, Kutzel, which is just, you know, our Grand Abolisher. Talion is a value engine. A lot of these, the ones you would expect, really the ones standing out are not all, not all Sisses are on Lavinia. And then Niambi is kind of the main one that really sticks out. Sorcery is just a demonic tutor. We've got the Force, two Fierces, no Force negation, decent bit of one man interaction, no Red Blast, got the Silence, got the Swords. And then Limdol's Vault, not one I really expect to see in Sisse. Not necessarily a bad card, just not one I've seen in a lot of the decks it's not especially popular right now and usually i see it trend more towards the lower color decks if you're a deck that mainly wins by casting doxide extortionist and having another way to get on top of your library that can be worth it we're doing relic of legends agatha soul cauldron relatively lean this is kind of what i expect them to look like not a lot of them on birthing pod it shows up i'm not shocked to see it this is basically what i always expect at this point blind obedience touch the spare realm get rid of that pesky pesky op agent or double ad oxide Ristic mystic smothering tithe oath to fairy combo piece 29 of them we're on the cradle a couple interesting uh, inclusions you know there's no eldritch revolution no neoform just the one dt i like the birthing pod it's like a nice clean sisay list to me like the flexibility of neombi and lavinia and i like being able to like tutor up ashiok and then oko can kind of just take over a game and just really mess people up at fifth place we've got another rock side Notably, we've already got a seventh creature. Phyrexian Metamorph is interesting. I actually kind of like this because the deck makes so much black and colorless mana. Not needing a blue pip for your clone, like I've seen decks run Fimage. I think going one extra mana and being have, having the flexibility of not needing to use a blue pip can be really nice because a lot of times we don't have that much blue mana lying around, uh, especially if it's a turn we're looking to try to win. Might need that blue mana for a brain freeze to get us started or a Thassa's Oracle or, you know, a Windfall or something. So being able to like, use our black mana, clone a Bowmaster, and then Windfall or Twister. That's pretty nice. So I, I like the Phyrexian Metamorph. It might seem odd for that to be your first choice for a clone, but I think it actually makes a lot of sense. We're not on Last Chance. We're just on the Warrior's Oath. So all the wheels still here. I'm going to do a compare thing to Zane's, but I'm just trying to see if I can notice anything that's missing. We are on the Swan Song. No Git Probe in the Sorceries. No Days here. I don't know. I really like Days. Uh, you can really get some people. It's just really nice to have another option for free interaction. No, not on the One Ring. Um, enchantments around the dress down. This card can be awkward. It can be nice to use it on like a stacks piece to go into your turn and try to go off. Kind of pushes you into a position where you have to pure breach win. Depending on what the dress down is holding back, potentially you can mill your whole library, cast your Thoracle, Thoracle on the stack, hold priority, get rid of your dress down, and then let your Thoracle enter the battlefield. We are still on the Mount Doom. We're not on Undercity Sewers, so none of the surveillance. Zane is on Git Probe, Infernal Plunge. The day is the last chance on Undercity Sewers, which I did notice. 
they were on Dress Down, Psych Rift, which has notably been out of Zane's list. Some of the rock sides are on it, some of them aren't. I don't know. We're, it's good when you need it, it's bad when you don't. Not being on the last chance and being on like Infernal Plunge over Dress Down and not being on the days, pretty relevant. We'll come up in your games. Um, Mount Doom, I've just found not to be that great. Even if I didn't want to be on a Surveil Land, I probably would run something other than Mount Doom. I mean, that's just where I'm at. Now we are looking at our top four, which Starting off with another Kennen Bonder Prodigy and another one that's on Walking Ballista. And they're on Devoted Druid as well. So not just different ways to dump our mana, different way to create our mana. Stonework Pack Beast, a different mana outlet. So not on the uh, big green guy. <laughs> What's the green creature's name? Okay, so not on Void Winnower, which has really been a staple of Kinnon for as long as I can remember, but is kind of in that uncastable tier. It's looking like maybe that's kind of their consideration here. So also no Thorn Mammoth, which if you're in like the turbo wee pods, Storm Mammoth can be one of the weaker options to flip into. These ones are all really good to flip into, like if I'm in a pod with a rock side, right? Like I'm I'm good to flip into the two that win me the game. Colossal Sky Turtle isn't really there to be flipped into. It's just also a big creature. I'm really good to flip into Wandering or Kick. I'm really happy to flip into Con Sphinx and Nez all in these kind of turbo wee pods. I think that makes a lot of sense. More sorceries than either of the other lists. We're on the Windfall and the Twister. So kind of we're kind of turbo winning out. Okay, I kind of see it. I, we've seen that we're kind of making it leaner. And we're also running the wheels, which is really nice. And then reshape another way to uh, tutor for an artifact. So we got that Born Upon a Wind here as well. Mana Drain, Misdirection. That's kind of cool. Free, free Interaction. Dramatic Reversal. So we're also ISO revving, it sounds like. Artifacts, lots of things you'd expect. Energy Refractor here too. So even more with the Mirage Mirror. So even more ways to convert our mana to infinite colored. Machine God's Effigy to go infinite with our Devoted Druid. It's looking like this is a Kinnon that's a little bit leaner. That's looking to have less dead flips in really fast games. More ways to just stumble into wins that aren't just Basalt Monolith. And then being able to win even without Kennen to dump man into, right? Being able to just do the Walking Ballista. So even if Kennen's totally locked out, should still be able to win. Enchantments, we do have the Sylvan Library. And then lands 26 on the City of Traders. I kind of expected to see that. I like it. I, I really like this build, especially like the two wheels. That's really cool. Next up, we're looking at the new hotness. This is the newest commander that we have to cover. And it already got a top four like the week it came out that's Stella Lee wild card pre-con commander from the newest set honestly if you've watched a video on it or tried to build it yourself you probably know more about it than I have than I do I know a couple of other things they can do uh, but I haven't played it yet I haven't got to really see the power myself Stella Lee wild card is one blue red uh, whenever you cast your second spell each turn exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn you may play that card and it has tap copy target instant or sorcery spell you control you may choose new targets for the copy activate only if you've cast three or more spells this turn and it's a 2-4, which I, I think is a pretty nice stat line. Hard to kill with Bowmasters. We'll go through, as you can see, there's a really lean creature package here uh, with just mana, clone, Spellseeker. And Spellseeker is basically like, go get a win con, because there's quite a few ways that this commander can just win and just keep presenting wins. Honestly, both the abilities are really good because one can find you the other and you can set up one for the other. Like you can top deck tutor for one of the win cons, cast another spell, get the thing, activates Cast the thing, activate Stella, win. So we'll look at some of the cards that we can win with when we get down here. So here's some of our tutors and just good burr cards. We're just trying to churn through our deck and make mana and get our win cons and win. So we have cards like Twisted Fealty, like the ones that really stand out. You should know that those probably combo. So this gains control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it, gains haste, and you create a wicked roll token attached up to one target creature. The main thing with a wicked roll is when you make another one, that one goes to the graveyard and each opponent loses one life. Cast a personal tutor, put a Twisted Fealty on top, and then cast like Get Probe to see if the coast is clear. Coast is clear. We have a trigger from Cell Elite. We X Exile that Twisted Fealty. Then we can cast it targeting our Stella Lee. We've cast three instants or sorceries this turn. So holding priority, tap, activate it, targeting Twisted Fealty. Stella Lee will make a copy of it, target Stella Lee. Stella Lee will untap, get a wicked roll token, and then repeat. We'll keep tapping and untapping Stella, and then we'll make roll tokens. And every time we do, each of our opponents will lose one life. Boop, 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 boop. You guys are dead. And then on top of that, we just have other good cards, right? You don't, I mean, sometimes you can just double Jessica's will with the commander. You don't always have to win the game. Sometimes you just probably win the game by, by casting two Jessica's will on a turn. One, we just have like one card win cons with our commander. But then also we have a little bit of a spell slingery value thing where we can kind of cast cantrips to help us set up, you know, double up on them. Worst case scenario, if, if things don't line up, we can still kind of try to get set up for the next turn. Cerulean Wisp, target creature becomes blue. Untap that creature, draw a card. With Cerulean Wisps, cast Wisp, target commander, tap commander, Wisp, untap commander, 
draw a card, tap commander, copy wisps. That's for the one mana spell. We just draw our deck right there. Boom, 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 boom. And then we have ways to give our commander haste, which will help us like go off all in one turn. Other cantropy cards that again, give us some incidental value while we're setting up. And again, we have to cast three instants or sorceries. So the third one, you know, presumably is going to be our card that we go to combo with. So we need to cast two on the way there. So having lots of these cheap ones can be nice. Or ones that are mana positive, like dramatic reversal, cards like refocus, untapped target creature, draw a card, twiddle effects, like title board, which is untapped target creature. Twitch, I think is similar to the other ones, right? Yeah, untapped draw a card. And then just we're, we're turning through the deck. We can dig through time, find more stuff. Yeah, there's just, just really strong stuff here. Good artifacts, defense grid. This, this is a, a really turbo -y, proactive list. Run breach combo. We don't have the great best tutors for it, but we do get to run it. Oh man, I cast all my things and I didn't get to go off. They got countered. Okay, next turn. That's cool. Cast Underworld Breach. Try it again. 27 lands. Nothing especially sticking out. We are on the surveil end. But Namo untaps our commander. God, that's so tricky. This is a deck. Again, like I said, I haven't got to see it in action. I haven't played it yet, but there's a lot of hype behind it. There's a lot of power behind it. It's a good thing it's only two colors because if this thing was Grixis, oof, that, that, would, that would be busted. And next up, the year is 20XX. Everybody makes melee references to perfection. We've got another rock side list. This one by Sergio. Uh, I know Sergio was testing like the new copied activated ability thing, copy triggered ability card, but not in this list. So let's just do another comparison. Let's see what we got. You guys wanna know why I always do like comparisons for Rogsai instead of actually going over the whole deck list? It's because of stuff like this. There's one card different. It's just, it's Swan Song, forget Probe. And you know, there's some thought behind it. I've talked about the Swan Song cut for Zane, but again, it's just one card different here. Not a ton to talk about. A lot of the things I said about Zane's Rogsai, even the last Rogsai I went over, apply here. Here we've got Swan Song over Git Probe, a bit more standard. I get Zane's reason for not wanting it. I get the reason for wanting it. Great job to Sergio, who has continued to perform amazingly with this deck. Awesome stuff getting second place here at Command Fest San Francisco. And last up, we have MTG Hot Dog, Lauren, friend of the channel, getting first place with a Timnacrom list. I, I went through and looked at the list a little bit. There's a couple cards that are notable and we'll, we'll go through it. The creature package not looking, you know, especially wild. We basically see Lavinia over Phyrexian Metamorph, which I think makes sense. I think going into this event, you should expect things to be a little bit more turbo-y, especially like with some of the better players, you know, being really turbo-pilled <laughs> and things in general being a little bit faster re more recently. So I think a card like Lavinia, which has been like in and out of TNK, list. I think it makes a lot of sense here. I like it. It's it's easier to get it out early. Arguably as castable as Boromir, but there's certainly more combinations of, of cards that can cast it turn one than I think can cast like a turn one Boromir. And being able to get that out in the play is really nice. Sorceries. We've got Gitaxian Probe, which is really good at seeing what's up, seeing if somebody's got it, seeing if coast is clear. Uh, we also have Praetor's Grass, which really has not been standard in TNK for quite a while. Nice little bit of flexibility to be able to get you know, just another tutor can help you if some of your stuff gets exiled, right? Like if you get MBT'd on one of your win cons or basically can function as a grim tutor that doesn't deal you any damage and potentially lets you do things like, hey, I already have a dock side, let me go get yours. It can let you like really deeply between it and like mean bet, like consult or tainted pack pretty aggressively, knowing that you have multiple outs to be able to win with other people's cards. And then we do have Deluge as the board wipe of choice. I'm assuming no fire covenant. And then we do have the Wheel of Fortune. Instance, we are on calling the week, which I kind of expect here. Even though the creatures, like seeing Lavinia might make you think like, oh, we're not going that turbo-y. Lavinia doesn't set off anything you're doing. It's not like it's symmetrical. So I think it's it's mainly like, well, I'm trying to combat that, but also I'm doing it. The Blast, Pact of Negation, shows up in most TNKs, but you know, especially if you're going faster, it makes a lot of sense. Final Fortune, Born Upon a Wind, both good ways to win an instant speed or win with uh, Necro in your instep. We are on the Nas, of course. Artifacts, nothing too wild here other than, you know, we're not on the One Ring. That's about it. Bunch of rocks. Enchantments, we're a little bit heavier here. Three we always see, Rhystic, Mystic, Breach. We're also on Necropotence, which I kind of expect to see when you're, you're trying to go a little bit quicker. And, you know, I think you really want to push wins. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then Smothering Tithe, if you really want to chill out and take advantage of the fact that you're drawing lots of cards and that people can't win right now. It's a good way to help push through wins later. Dress down is cool. You can make it hard for people to win with like their Thassa's Oracle, things like that. Or just, again, you can use it to kind of be an anti stacks piece thing, right? Use it on the instep, stop a Draineth Magistrate from working so you can breach. And then 26 lands, no Cavern of Souls, no City of Traders. This makes a lot of sense to me. The card inclusions that it's not like 
crazy different from like a standard TNK list. It's like five, six cards different, but they make a lot of, like they all point in a similar direction of kind of trying to go fast. I'm kind of trying to see my spot and win there and make sure other people can't win when they think they have their spot. Great job to Lauren coming out of retirement and winning this one. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video. This looked like a really cool tournament. I love seeing the Command Fest events happen. Hopefully we see these happen at every single Command Fest. You know, if you're in charge of organizing Command Fest stuff, get it going. Reach out to Zane, any of the people at topdeck.gg. They'll help you out if you need any help. Love to see more of this type of stuff. As always, we continue to see CDH continue to grow, continue to show up in more and more somewhat official capacities and just continue to be explosive. There were multiple, I had to make my choice of 120 plus person events to cover this week. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, go play CDH. Have a good one, everybody.